Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Life with the Liz and Bees. My name is Hunter. And I'm Sammy. It's been, what, four weeks since we've released an we've episode? We've been busy. We've been sick. We have been. I've had a master class. It's been a roller coaster of the last four weeks. It's been it's been a long time since we've done an episode, mm. but we're excited to drop this one for you today. Yeah, so Sam, go ahead. Tell us, what are we talking about yeah, today? Yeah, we're going to be talking about how to balance work and family life in marriage. And this is going to kind of be like our episode that talks about this specific topic because we've had this little parts of this intertwined into other episodes in the past. I think you're really going to be blessed by this episode today because we're we're bringing it home for people. Bringing it all home. It's like when you go to Cracker Barrel and you order that <laughs> country breakfast. Big country breakfast. You get your fried steak. You get your gravy. You get your biscuits and gravy. You get your eggs. You get your grits. You get your hash browns. You're getting Coffee, it all. Coffee creamer. with a side of napkin <laughs> to wipe your face after you finish that meal. That's what we're hitting today. We're hitting every point there is okay. to hit about Let's when it comes it. to work family and balance because i'll tell you what we don't have that so listen up <laughs> we're gonna learn a lesson today as well we're learning <laughs> as we go and we're excited to share what we've learned with you so stick with us and we'll see you on the other side all right all right sam what do you think is the most important thing when it comes to balancing work and family i think it's two things um Kay. that come to mind Setting boundaries yeah, and setting um, the family order, which is priorities, knowing your priorities, because God talks about in his word and teaches us that he comes first mm-hmm. and then it's your spouse and then it's your kids and then everything else underneath that um, is a priority. And so I think when you get out of order in your family and in your marriage is when you put your spouse before God, your kids before your spouse, your kids before God. Things start to get wacky, and we've experienced this ourselves. Absolutely, yep. And I'm not talking here about like having an infant, which we have a four month old that has a lot of needs, uh, needs a lot of time, needs a lot of attention. So does our toddler. They're not independent. They are totally dependent on us. I'm not talking to here a scenario where like if your baby's crying and your husband asks you for something, you put your husband before your crying baby. Like that's not what I'm talking about here because you need to attend to your baby. I'm yeah. talking about in the overall scheme of things, if there's a constant pattern where in certain scenarios you're choosing continuously your children's needs or your children over quality time with your spouse, over fulfilling your spouse's love language, over prioritizing them and pursuing them, that's a problem. Same with God. Yeah. Because he should come first. Absolutely. I a hundred percent agree. And I think a big thing on priorities, right, is where are your priorities at? And later we're gonna talk about like supporting each other's careers and just hobbies or whatever it may be, just supporting your other person. But where are their priorities at? So for me, I shouldn't have let's say just golf, right? I love golf, but golf shouldn't be number two on my list. That shouldn't be a priority for me. And we've seen how this has hurt our marriage sometimes. If I go golfing six times in a month, that means I'm only off on the weekends, That's right? No, no. <laughs> I'm only <laughs> for real, but I'm only on the weekends. Yeah. I only get three days off on the weekends. That means how many times I'm off? That means six out of twelve days on the weekends I'm yep. golfing. That's You're choosing golf over your family. Exactly. Over and your it's spouse. it's it's setting priorities. Now that's not saying I shouldn't golf and get the time on myself. That's not what it's but saying, but it's saying we set boundaries. We have priorities that priorities. we have to meet. Exactly. So it's setting a boundary with the priority. Absolutely. Like you do want to golf. It's a priority because it actually helps your mental health. It helps mm-hmm. you have a social life. It helps you have an enjoyment and a fulfillment outside of work. And you need that. Yeah. Everybody needs that. Everyone needs it. And we set a boundary where you're allowed to golf twice a month. Yeah. That's not me as a wife tying you down and saying you can't golf more than twice a month because I said so. Yeah. You desire to fulfill my love language and desire to prioritize me above your friends and above golf and above that. And so out of gratitude and love for me and respecting me, you have no issue telling people no, if you already have two golf engagements a month. Absolutely. And that's what we've, we've kind of established um, a balance with that, right. Of saying, Hey, I can, I at least get two golf outings a month. Um, I'll try not to make them back to back weekends so that, we There's can have two weekends where it's just me and you or other things that we have go- going on. 
or I can just go do those on the other two weekends as well. Um, now, now there's times I golf a little more, but you know, it depends. It depends. And it's, we'll we talk, talk again. About we'll it. talk about adaptability and all of those you things. You don't too. just say yes to something without talking to me about it either. Yeah. And we've learned the hard way on this. We have. I would definitely say we There was a have. golf arrangement a few months ago. <laughs> that was a fun that one. That Hunter said yes to. And I had something planned for our family and thought he was coming with me. And he didn't have it in the calendar, which. No, I think uh, let's I think the real story was I didn't think it was that important for me to go. But what was it? It was a birthday party. Birthday party. That's it what it was. It was a kid's birthday party. I, it was I remember Lily's thinking first kid's birthday party. It was. It was Lily's first kid's birthday party. But Sam didn't. You didn't say I had to go. But you were asking me and you're like, if we don't have anything going on, you should come and you should you can help me. With Lily. With the girls. So we can help with the girls and, you know, it'll just be a big help. It's It's a full party. It's a lot going on and whatever. And I kind of just took it as like, ah, it's not that big of a deal if I don't go. So when somebody asked me if I could golf, I felt like, yeah, I absolutely can. But you didn't ask me. Well, number one, I didn't ask. I didn't ask the person what time. I didn't. I just said yes. And when I told them yes, they assumed I could go. So they went ahead and booked the tea time, which they paid for in advance. And then now I'm and obligated to go. And me and Sam, we had a little bickering, a little fight little involved. Um, and it was just basically us talking about like. It was a lack of communication. Lack, a con- complete lack of communication. And, and luckily. Assum- and assuming, right? That's yeah. also where it comes a lot of arguments and disagreements in marriage is when you assume that it's just not a big deal or that the other person will be okay with it. And that's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, it's okay if I don't go to this. Like, it's mm-hmm. not that big of a deal. But to me, it was. But it was to you. And at the time, I was just like, well, I already said yes. I can't get out of it now. Like, it's either I hurt you or mm-hmm. I hurt the other person who already paid. And it was just so a I very bad, <laughs> very bad situation. Anyways. Well, we learned from it. We learned, we learned from, from, it. from it. And it Absolutely. was a great experience to learn from for both of us to have better communication in the future and to set a specific boundary around that and now we've done such a good job and i don't feel like we've had any issues or arguments that have been in relation to golfing in a while yeah no and that's and then for men like bro just set a boundary with your wife and set or not a boundary but a priority with your wife and make time and figure out a schedule like me and sam sam's like go into november see which days you're available and what days we don't have booked and just start booking those two golf outings or maybe you have three golf outings Go book those in advance. We have nothing going on. Or if I'm busy, go book it while I'm busy. And that's what we'll do now is like we have timed our priorities so good that the days that Hunter golfs, I set up mom walks, which Mm -hmm. is something I love to do. But I don't want to take away those days on Fridays doing mom walks away from Hunter. So it's perfect because he can golf on those days Mm -hmm. that I set up a mom walk or I set up something else. And it's like you get two golf days away from the kids to do your thing a month. And then I also get two days a month where I can go do whatever I want to do. And you have the girls. So it's a balance. It's not just like, oh, Hunter gets to go have his thing and I don't get to have any free time. It's like, no, we both set that as a priority because it is important to prioritize your mental health, your desires and passions of what you want to do outside of your spouse and outside of your kids. And again, I think that kind of hits on the supporting part that I was talking about earlier, how we were going to hit on that and supporting each other's needs and wants. It's not saying that we're okay with them having a priority and putting that above them. That's not what we're saying. We're saying just support them when there's something that they enjoy. Don't just start hating on it and thinking it's just yeah. a terrible thing for doing. Obviously, you know, if they're gambling or something crazy like that, that's a different story. But if yeah. it's just them wanting to play golf, if it's them wanting to play video games at 10 p.m. at night when you're already going to sleep, whatever yeah. it may be, support them in it because there's a reason they're doing it. Are they escaping from you because they don't want to be around you? I don't know. Maybe that's a conversation that needs to be had. Yeah. That's not for me. I love my family. I just really enjoy golf and yeah. Sam knows that. When you support your significant other, the person who's being supported, it's all about time management. And I think that's something we really need to hit on. Um, and this really leads into the sh- same thing about golfing. Like if I go at 7 a.m. and I'm back home at 10, I can still spend the entire Easy. day with my kids Easy. and with my wife. Those are my favorite. golf. Those are her outings. favorite golf outings. I'm like, oh, my gosh, he's home like literally mid morning. What, two hours after you done. guys wake up. And we can still go out and do things before Lily's nap time. It's like the yeah. best of both worlds because he gets to go do something for him. He gets to come home, do family time. I could even go out and do something for me that day if I wanted to. So it's just it's perfect. 
But I think a huge point that comes to time management is having a shared calendar. And this is something that we started like probably in the last six months where we realized that we were dropping the ball on each other's activities that were going on. And both of us were like, why don't we just have a shared calendar? Like, why don't we just know what the other person has going on outside of our kids and our spouse? And it has been so incredible for us because we can literally at any moment when Hunter's at work, when I'm here and people ask, hey, are you free on this day? Hey, can you do this? Hey, can you do that? Literally in that moment, I go, well, let me check the calendar. And then I check the calendar. I see if Hunter has something going on. If there's not anything, I always text Hunter just to make sure. Yep. Say, hey, is this date good? He'll do the same thing for me. Um, I mean, of course, mishaps happen, but a shared calendar is Well, it's a perfect opportunity changing. to just call your other out, your other significant other out. Like, yo, you didn't put in the calendar. So that's on you, you know? And right, that actually just happened with tool, us recently. You have a tool <coughs> that you're both supposed to use. And if yep. one person doesn't use the tool, that's on them. Like, you have to use Absolutely. the tool effectively. And I recommend 100% don't. I know a lot of people, we tried to do the writing calendar and having it up, mm, but doesn't that work doesn't for work us. for us because number one, when you're out and you're not in front of the calendar, you won't you see it. Know. You're just like, oh, I think I remember. And then you're just, you know, rearranging things. Literally, you can share your calendar on your iPhone yep. and it's easy for both of you to put something in. And, and we literally get notifications when the other person puts an literally. event in. Yeah. So like I... Every single Cowboys game I put in the calendar. And I was now, sitting in have bed. have we respected that Cowboys schedule? Because I think I've seen two games this year. I don't know. I don't know. Have we? Uh, little well, it coincides with our couples group it on does, Sunday night. So does. that's a struggle. <laughs> but, y'all, I was sitting in bed the day that Hunter put all the Cowboys games on the schedule. And all I literally 17. made a video and put it on TikTok because my phone was blowing up for a solid 15 minutes. It was like Cowboys game on this day, Cowboys game on this day. And I'm like, okay, Hunter, I get the point. Every Sunday, there's a Cowboys <laughs> game for the next yeah, 12 Yeah, but there's weeks. different timings. Sometimes are Monday, no, sometimes they're Thursday. Because like, I do want to honor that is a passion of yours, and I know that you want to be a part of that. And so. again, that's another really big example of priorities. I've seen three games this year. That's probably the least amount I've seen. In a while. And I, like, I probably never since yeah. I've been born. I'm proud and of you. <laughs> but it's putting priorities over that. Like, it's other things that we have, whether it's couples group that we lead on Sundays, whether it's... Um, we got together with some friends last we Sunday. We got s- together with friends last Sunday. Now, I did look at my phone. I did, you yeah. know, look at the score and stuff like that, but I'm not extremely focused on it. But you were like, Sam, we can't go on a double date with yeah. your friend because I have the Cowboys game. And I tell you, I used to do this That in the may past. be Hunter five years ago that yeah. said, Sam, there's no way we're doing something on a Sunday. And I would shut down and I'd be like, okay, I just will never mm-hmm. offer things to Hunter on Sundays because I know I'm going to get shot down. And his heart has just changed so much, I think, because you know that, like, yeah, you can glance over and check the score and watch the game. And it is a real passion of yours, but you also know if an opportunity comes up on a Sunday to go love on somebody else, meet somebody else, spend time with there's somebody just else, you there's prioritize There's definitely that. S- uh, so many more important things in life than football. a football team that you have no control over. <laughs> um, the only control I have over it is quite literally nothing. <laughs> yeah. And so the day you I get the so day I it. get Jerry Jones' number or I get anyone on the Cowboys staff's number, then maybe things will change in that perspective. But now, fantasy, a little bit different story. I have a little bit more control. Fantasy football. You know? um, but There's a wife listening to this right now that's going to pause this and rewind it and go play it in front of her husband and say, you should listen to Hunter <laughs> talk about it's tough. how it's far so he's tough, came though. with football. I, I have came a, I've came a long way, and I'm still – like I still love football. Like there is oh, no yeah. question about it. Like if we're free on a Sunday, I got my phone up, computer up, TV up, and I'm watching all there is football. But that's when all priorities have been satisfied. God's been satisfied on Sunday. Uh, the kids have are to sleep. Sam is asleep. Uh, the dogs are good. My golf outing's done. Like <laughs> my priorities have all been hit. So I'm like, all right, let's enjoy ourselves. Let's watch some football. And I Sam's like, that. go enjoy yourself. So I think we do a really good job of supporting each other's passions and supporting each other's um, interests. And, and the time w- management part. And, and the being time management manage part. That. And um, really, I think for me, when it comes to time management, like time blocking is everything for me because I have a lot of multifaceted passions of things that I do. And um, I know for me, time blocking has been game changing. I may have talked about this before, but like 
if you are somebody that has multiple passions like I do and you get an hour, a two hour, a three hour block of time, whether that is at night, you know, I think this is important to talk about. Hunter works a full-time job. I'm home full-time with the girls. I also have multiple businesses that I run from home during their nap time and at night. And so that can get really sticky in the fact that I may not have enough time in the day to get what I need to get done. And so my businesses start to take the back burner. And so I think this is a really important thing to bring up is that like if your life is the same way, having that conversation with your spouse saying, hey, like the first hour after the girls go to bed, I'm going to work while you go work out or you go do something. And like Hunter's done such a good job of time managing his workouts in right after the girls go down. So I can take that 30 minutes, 45 minutes to work, get some stuff done. Then we both go take a shower and then it's our time. Yep. And then we'll either work together because now Hunter and I have a super fun business that um, we get to do together now, yep. um, which is so fun because that has just lit a fire under us to spend even more time together working. Um, but I think that's really important too because – if every single night of your week is consumed by Zoom calls or your business or something separate from your spouse, you're forgetting um, to prioritize them before your work after they've just been at work all day and they're really looking forward to spending time with you. And there was many, many times in my previous business, in my previous years of growing as an entrepreneur that I every single night was on Zoom calls. Every single night I was on my phone. Every single night I couldn't put it down and just relax and spend time with Hunter. And I have since then learned a lot and shifted a lot of my priorities so that at night I get that one hour time block, Hunter gets to go work out, and then after that's done we just chill, we relax, we hang out together, and we get to fill each other's cups and um, spend quality time together every single night. And that is super super important um yeah and that's a perfect lead into quality time versus quantity time i mean right there is just absolutely a perfect setting for me as soon as i get home i have an hour i know i've said this a million times on this podcast but i have an hour 15 to 20 minutes of that is us eating dinner the other 40 minutes is us we go outside maybe for 20 30 minutes but I have to make the most of that time. If I don't, with then your that's, girls. that's yeah. my own issue. You're talking about with the girls. With the girls. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. With the girls. That's my own issue that I don't get to spend with the girls. And if I want if I decide I want to be on my phone, okay, I get to suffer the consequences of knowing, all right, you went to bed and you got 10 minutes with your girls because you were on your phone yeah. for 30. And I get it. I'm not on my phone as much. So I get yeah. other husbands. Like I get it. You're not on your phone as much. So when you get home, you're like, oh, this is my time to relax. Right. But you're about to have the rest of the night to relax. Yeah. So just put the girls down, enjoy your time with them, and then enjoy your phone or whatever. Well, and this also comes down to us setting boundaries with our kids to have them in their own rooms, in their own beds, on a strict nighttime routine. And yeah. I know a lot of families don't do that, and you're listening right now, and you're like, we co-sleep, our kids are in our bed, our kids are in our room, we don't have any routine. And if that works for you, that's fine. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. And I'm not saying that we're against that. All I'm saying is for me and Hunter to prioritize our marriage before our children. um, (coughs) It's not a good idea for us to have our children in the bedroom. Absolutely not. Now, when the baby is born, obviously, and you have a newborn. You have to have them in the bassinet and everything. They're in the bassinet. You're breastfeeding. Like now our daughter is four months old. And right now, I mean, she's sleeping in her crib. And Lily's right there sleeping in her toddler bed and they're on the same schedule. Again, it's a season. It's a season where you have the baby in the room, you're you're going through it, and maybe you're in the season for a little bit longer than you expected. All I'm saying is if your marriage is struggling because you're not having quality time with your spouse or you're not fulfilling each other's love language, I really want to challenge you to look at the the family order and dynamic that you've set in your home the structure and the schedule that you have set in your home and ask yourself are you prioritizing your children before your spouse and do your kids own your time do your kids own you like does the world revolve around your kids or have you brought your children into your world and this was a really big thing that hunter and i talked about and we started implementing when we had lily it was the world does not revolve around lily yeah. Lily is being brought into our world. So Lily is going to adjust to our life and our routine. And of course, there's things that we had to shift and navigate because she's a baby and she's a toddler and we had to move things around. Again, there's a season for everything. But if it's a common pattern month after month after month after month and you're going crazy and you're wondering why nothing's changing or working and you're struggling, 
I want to encourage you to look at that first because yeah. that could be hindering. And just to make a point there, um, just because it can sound a little bad saying that they're coming into our world and they're going to live our life. That's we're not just saying that in a way of just saying, like, we don't get to do anything for them. We do so much for them all the time. And that's there's no we question. Do. We almost everything we do on the weekends is going to be a revolved around them. But it's them adjusting to our schedule is what yeah. it really is. Right. It's them saying, OK, this is what time we eat dinner. OK, mm-hmm. we are not going to watch any TV. OK. We, we are boundaries. going to go to the grocery store instead of going to the park. Okay, you do not get dessert. Like, that's not what we get tonight or yeah. whatever it is. I really don't know how Hunter and I could be thriving in our marriage right now if we didn't have a strict structure with our children. Yeah, I have no idea like, how people I do really it without that. I really just don't know. I'm, I um, honestly give you guys full credit if you can do it without that because we've seen it. We see couples well, all the time. I have a lot of moms that come to me all the time and that ask like how we do things. And then when I share it with them, how we do things, they're like, I can't do that. I can't put no. my baby in another room. I can't. And I'm like, you can, you're it's not, not willing. I want to make it very easy. It is not easy for us to put our kids in the bedroom and listen to our baby cry for 10 minutes before we go in there and, and comfort. fix whatever the we're issue is. We're not letting is. our kids cry we it don't, out. That's not what we're saying. We're not letting our kids we're cry it out. And number two, we're not, struggles. we're not just so happy that our kids are not getting their way. That's not what we're saying. We're saying that we have had to set boundaries so that now we have a schedule and our kids are extremely happy with everything we do. They Lily are. is the happiest baby when she wakes up from her nap. Lily is the happiest baby. She hops in her bed and she jumps in her bed and she gets under the covers and she's like, she night, night, see you guys she later. She doesn't sleep in our bed with us. There was one time even that she was sick and struggling to sleep and so we brought her in our bedroom it Girl, didn't even work out she wanted to play she was like is this play time we're like no this is sleep time we, so we gave put her it back 15 in her room. minutes and we said girl you're going back to your room she actually doesn't sleep in our bed yeah. ever well so she does better in her own environment yeah. but we want to raise strong independent kids that one respect their parents and know that they're not the boss we're not their best friend. Like mm-hmm. we want to love and support and and our kids to know that, but we do want our kids to know that um, there's a boundary. There's a boundary. They can't walk all over us. They yeah. have to respect us. And our values on this come just like straight from God's word. Like we're not just saying this like just to say spit it. <laughs> out of our mouths just to say it. We're saying this because we've grown up in in households where there were boundaries, there were things set and um did we like it in the moment sometimes growing up as kids? No. But now yeah, as parents understand. and adults, <laughs> do we understand why our parents set those boundaries and uh, how their marriages were flourishing because of it? Yes. Like, I think I look back at my parents and I'm like, okay, I get it now why they did this, 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 and this. Because if not, they probably would have got divorced because the kids would have ran their life. Yeah. You know what I mean? So balancing work and family life and marriage is super important when it comes to setting boundaries, you know, and boundaries wasn't even something that we were going to talk about, but I don't think that you can talk about this without bringing up boundaries. Boundaries. We actually have a whole episode about boundaries. Yeah. And I think that's why we were just like, Oh, we don't really need to hit on that. If you want to really hear how Hunter and I have set boundaries in life and family and marriage, we have a whole episode about that. But another thing is like Hunter and I are equal in everything that we do when it comes to our partnership as a married couple and as parents we split household duties and parent duties across the board and we actually have a specific episode that we've already recorded about household duties parental and i want to make a point really quick i learned something i learned something like i don't know how long ago it was like a month ago two months ago i don't know where i learned it from but you know how like in the old testament they would sacrifice a lamb right they would sacrifice an animal on the altar and you know that's how their sins were forgiven it's funny how in a marriage we get married on an altar and we die to each other yeah so if you're a husband who's over there like no that's my wife's duty that's my wife's duty how's it your wife's duty did you put your wife on the altar and she died and now she does everything no Mm -hmm. you both died on the altar and now you both owe each other in our sacrifice treat your wife like christ treated his church so like that's that you both died on the altar so a lot a lot of husbands like to just pick the part where it says wives submit to your husbands 
and it's crazy because literally just one line over it says husbands are the head of the wife as christ is the head of the church but it says love your wife as christ loved his church so love your wife in that way well and the bible talks about our roles being different like our roles are different my role as the mother and as the wife Mm -hmm. is to submit to my husband and i want to submit to you and i want to be led by you because you um love me and because you want to um support me in my duty as a mother and as a wife which right now in this season that looks like me staying home with our girls throughout the week my role is to feed them and to care for them and to cook and make sure they're fed and they're enjoying life and your role as the husband right now in this season is to financially provide for our family and yeah. leave the home and go to work and be somewhere that you don't really want to be for 12 hours a day. You'd rather be home with me and the girls, yeah. but you sacrifice doing that. Just like I sacrifice maybe desires and dreams and things I want to do during the day because I have such a responsibility to raise our daughters during the day. And then we get to do that together when you come home. And so I love the both and to that scripture because it is so important. I want to submit to my husband because he leads our family well. And if you weren't leading our family well, then of course we're going to like be hitting heads all the time and I'm not going to want uh, to follow you. Yeah. And I'm not going to want to obey you and I'm not going to want to listen to you. But I do those things because I respect you because you've earned my respect. Yeah. And that is huge. You've earned my respect because you are strong when I am weak. And like today when I had a headache and I was exhausted, like without question, you took the girls because you're their dad. I don't need to ask you to take our children. I don't need to like expect or beg you to like watch our girls. Yep. You do it because you're their dad. It shouldn't be like, oh, thank you for like watching our kids, which unfortunately is how it is for a lot of women. They like are afraid to like ask their husbands or they don't trust their husband or they're like, he wouldn't know what to do. He doesn't know how to feed the baby, dress the baby, cook for the baby. He doesn't know anything that goes on in the home. Both and there's a two part to that. (laughs) Um, One, are you including him? Does he feel a little scared by you because you're so dominant over the motherly role and you won't allow him to be a part of anything? Yep. And then two, is he just a lazy guy who works all throughout the week and is like, I'm tired and I don't have to do that. That's your job. There's a difference. If you're a mom listening to this right now and you want help, go tell your husband that um, he needs to meet his end of the bargain as the dad. Well, I want to make a help out. I want to make a point on that, too. Um, So for me, when I get home and it's been a very long day, Sam knows it's been a long day. She kind of just like I kind of let her know like, hey, it's been a long day. It's been a very tough day. Like, do you mind doing a little bit more for the kids tonight? Like in dealing with all that and taking care of the sleeping and going to sleep, whatever. So I can go work out a little earlier tonight, whatever it may be. Um, I I like to address it like that. And I think some husbands like to address it as it's your job to take care of the kids, take care of everything. And that to me doesn't seem like the right way. And it's not the right way. I have scripture right here that literally says. That's not the way to do it. It says in Colossians 3, 19 through 21, it says, husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Like right there, it's telling you, don't be harsh to them. You can come home from a very long day and instead of yelling at your wife because you had a hard day and telling her she needs to take care of everything and clean up the house and take care of the kids and do all that because she's been at home all day. That's not how you do it. it. And it says it in scripture. If you love God and you believe in the Bible, go read the scripture and it tells you right here. That's not how you do it. Love your wife and don't be harsh to them. Well, and it's just, I just think about it from my perspective as the wife. When you come home and you're like, Sam, I've had a really long day. Like, I'm not feeling good or I need some help today. I want to help. I'm like, oh, no problem. I've got you. Even though I may have had a really long day, I may have had a hard day. I know that when I'm having a hard day and when I'm having a weak moment, you're going to pick up my slack. Yeah. And that's why I know it's okay. Um, Even... To go through that with you because I know that we've got each other's backs. There could be couples listening to this right now where they're like, unfortunately, that's not how it's operating for you in your marriage. And Hunter and I want to encourage you to have those hard conversations. Go to marriage counseling. Really uproot those things that are holding you guys back from supporting each other and connecting because you got to figure this out. I mean, you do. Your kids are watching you and they're looking up to you. And if they see that 99% of the time mommy is doing everything 
and daddy just sits there on his phone or he is in another world playing video games or prioritizing all these other things, that's they're going to be their expectation of how they're supposed to look for a spouse and how they're supposed to parent one day. Yep. It comes back to you taking personal responsibility and holding your spouse accountable. Accountability is huge. We hold each other accountable. Yep. Even in parenting and disciplining. If I'm yelling at Lily and I'm quick to anger and I snap at my daughter, Hunter calls me out and goes, Sam, you were just quick to anger right there. Like, he's not like, go repent and go confess your (laughs) sin. (laughs) But I know, oh my gosh, like I'm in the wrong. Like I should not have responded to her that way. And vice versa. If you react in a way to Lily um, when disciplining or um, something happens and I see how Lily is reacting because sometimes when we're quick to anger or when we're disciplining we we're just like frustrated right and we're just like I just want to like nail into this kid like what they're doing is wrong and we miss sometimes that compassion and that like fatherly love in that moment and we call each other out on it and we need to hold each other accountable yeah. to it and it's a needed. lot um, and it is so needed <coughs> yeah and I just want to hit a point on when you're talking about like um, just like a dad going to and I know a lot of men don't listen to this, but if you do, um, being on your phone and going to play video games, going to do golf, whatever it may be, if you set your priorities, you set boundaries, and you time manage well, you can do all of those things. Your wife will have no problem. You can do all of them. And I promise you, your wife will not have an issue. A lot of people like to say, your wife's awesome for not nagging you about these things or um, getting on to you about this. And I never hear you complain about your wife. And I'm like, why do I have to complain? I did my part. I've done the things that I need to do so that my wife respects me and respects that I want to go do certain things. If you can take care of your stuff, I promise you, you can go do whatever you want. You can yeah, it's, go have fun. It's heartbreaking to hear even some of the stories that you've shared with me over the years, like well over the years that when you've been out with, you know, just other guys at work or, you know, just different areas and you've heard them talk about like their wife in negative ways or you've heard them, you know, just say things like, um, I'm so excited to go golfing and get a day away from my kids and away from my wife. And you almost like start not sarcastically call them out, but you're like, what? Like you don't want to have a day with your kids and your wife, you know, or something like that. And it just does go to show like, and I get it. You do need your time away. It's not saying that you don't need your time away from your wife and your kids. I get that part of it, but I've had too many guys I've been with or been around that are like, I'm tired of playing blocks with my kids. Like I want to go do, I want to go golfing every weekend. And it's like, to me, I'm like, do you not love your family? I, I've worked with you. You worked 70 hours a week. So you're not home ever at that point. And now you're on the weekends. You're golfing every single day. Where do you spend time with God? Where do you spend time with your wife? Where do you spend time with your kids? Like life in 40 years, nobody's going to remember how good you can hit a golf ball. Nobody's going to remember how good you were on Fortnite or call of duty nobody will remember that i promise you what they're going to remember you for or at least your kids and your wife are going to remember you for is you going to do those things instead of spending time with them so why not take the time to do that why not take the time of i I, there's another scripture here that i want to hit on too and it's colossians 3 23 through 24 and it's whatever you do work at it with all your heart as working for the lord not for human masters since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as, as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. And I think right there is hitting on what I'm talking about. Like your purpose on this earth is not to do things that you enjoy. That is not your purpose on this earth. Like God did not bring you here. It's such a selfish fleshly desire is to do things that you love and enjoy all the time. And if you think that way, your marriage is not going to work. Your parenting skills are not going to work because your kids are not going to respect you. And I promise you, you're going to fail at work as well. Um, God put you on this earth for a reason. He put you on here for a purpose and it's not to serve yourself. To serve others. It's to serve others. So stop with this mindset of, I want to go have fun. It's better for my mental health. Yes. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying I just said, if you set your priorities, you set your boundaries and you have time management, you can do all of those things and everything will be in line. And that's why for me, it's worked out so well because I am able to take care of God. I'm able to take care of my wife. I'm able to take care of my kids. And I do all of that in a certain time management time. Don't get me wrong. It's a lot sometimes. I tell Sam all the time, we do too much. <laughs> like, we do too much. We really do. Like, and I'm, I tell you that all the time. Like, we got to drop something. Like, it's too much going on right now. But, I'm just, I mean, I just golfed yesterday. I do too much, and I just spent seven hours at a golfing tournament yesterday, enjoying food, enjoying time with the guys, enjoying 
whatever. I enjoyed that, but I had everything done before I went out and did that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, sorry, I was getting a little mic passionate drop, there. Literally mic drop right there. I mean, I'm totally clipping that into a little Instagram reel because okay, that was cool. powerful. Awesome. What you just said right there. Um, and I know there's not a lot of men that listen to this podcast to because more women listen to podcasts like this, but um, low-key send this to your husband. Like, low-key send it to anybody that you feel like would be impacted by this i don't know maybe don't send it to him it'd be a little call but out like sometimes <laughs> you need to hear it from somebody else that like isn't your spouse and like hunter and i low-key do this to each other in the dms all the time we'll send instagram <laughs> reels like we'll just send it because we know the other person needs help with that we know the other person and it's not to jab at wait the other you person. do that I, that's what those are for now You're I, funny. Okay. it's not to jab at the other person it's just to support each other like there was yeah. one i sent to hunter yesterday that convicted me about um parenting it was like a little carousel about just some tips when your toddler's throwing a tantrum and i found a ton of value in it and i'm not solo parenting i'm like my husband needs to see this as well like this i think is a really good thing that we could start implementing with lily so i sent it in the dms to hunter and he got to see it too and he got to learn from it and then we can have conversations about it so i'm like i just want us to be equal in everything that we do but the only way that we can be equal in that is by communicating and talking about that together you know something i was just thinking of too i know this is a little off topic but when we're talking about selfish desires um, I've realized this world thinks that uh, love languages is something of how you hear it. So they only focus on like, they're like, oh yeah, my love language is... Words of affirmation. Words of affirmation. That's how I express my love. It's like, no, that's not... A lot of people think it's how, it's how you express it, not based off of how you receive from the other mm. person. And what's funny is they then focus on themselves and they're like... Oh, you, your love language is, let's say, gifts. Mm -hmm. So she must love gifts. Oh, well, but my, the way I talk is through words of affirmation. So I'm going to just speak words of affirmation on you. A lot of people think that's what love language is instead of focusing on what love language they receive from the other person. That's what it's all about. And that's what it's all about. And again, that's another thing that can help so much with setting priorities, boundaries, and time management. Focus on their uh, love languages and that's setting their um, that's meeting their boundaries. That's helping meet their needs that they have. Sorry, I wanted to hit on that really quick. No, I yeah. I mean, literally, my love language is like any opportunity I get to take a nap. Like, can I take a nap? <laughs> and like today, I literally took a three hour nap. And um, Hunter, like, literally was outside with a water gun with Lily, apparently, running in the yard for like 30 minutes playing a water gun fight with her. And I slept through the whole entire thing. Yeah, she um, and then Lily just walked upstairs soaking wet. And Sam's like, what is happening? And like, what Sam is Sam just woke up from a nap? Just. <laughs> <laughs> like what you guys do while I was napping <laughs> and Leighton napped through it too. And Hunter's just outside water gun playing with Lily. But like Hunter's love language is like acts of service. So like I do his laundry every week. I fold his clothes. I put them up for him. Um, you know, I cook dinner four nights a week. Like I do a lot of acts of service around the house uh, because I know that it takes a huge mental load off of him having to do those things when he works 12 hours a day. And I've said this quote in the past and it's communication is the ability to speak in a way they hear it like and i i have that at my work it's sitting it's on a post-it note sitting right below me because i think about it all the time the way i communicate not everyone's going to hear it but if i speak in a way they hear it they're yep. gonna hear it that's trust everything. me like if sam's is gifts and that's how she hears things okay here's a gift that's not sam's by the way hers is a words of affirmation and yep. um, other things but the point is i need to speak in a way that you're going to hear it and then same here I don't just speak because it's easier for me to speak in a way of just giving a gift to you. I shouldn't just do it because it's easier for me to do it that way. No, I need to do it so that you can actually hear me and understand what I'm going through um, or understand what you need. So I always remember the acronym. It's easy to remember. It's called tiny. Yeah. And it means their interests, not yours. Mm, And it's something I use all the time in business. Anytime I'm connecting with someone that I want to share my business with. I always think about how can I serve them? How can I add value to them? What are their interests, not mine? Yeah. Not I want to get a quick sale. I want to get money from them. I want to get something from them. No, it's what are their interests? I'm going to meet their need. I'm going to serve them because it's not about me. It's about them. And when you go into anything in your life with a service-based mindset of how can I serve my spouse? How can I serve my kids? How can I serve myself? How can I serve God? How can I serve others? When you get the focus off of you and you get out of that victim mindset, 
man, there's so much blessings and joy and you just start living in gratitude and abundance. Yeah. And when you live in gratitude and abundance, that's where the true just blessings overflow and you stop being so angry and frustrated and frazzled and overwhelmed all the time. Yeah. And you truly get to experience God's Holy Spirit joy manifested in your life. I think my life has completely changed since becoming an extrovert. I think I'm an extrovert. And you know why? You are I think extrovert. introverts are so they're so about themselves. They're not about the other people around them. And that I just thought about that right now. Like I think about now how you I've told me so that much. a few days ago. You go, Sam, I think I'm like more extroverted. I think now. I have. I've become extroverted. And I think it's because I'm done with the selfish desires that I want to fulfill, whether that's with football, whether that's with golf. So you think that introvert things. was like a defense mechanism you'd put up and you'd be like, I'm introverted. And you did that because you just I, wanted to. I think I'm realizing I don't I don't want to say things. every introvert is that well, way. No, because everyone's different. But, but for, for me, for my own self, I think I was an introvert because I fulfilled my own self desires. On my, I was selfish way of saying, I want to do whatever I want to do. So you could shut everybody else out and say, I don't want to hang out with people. I don't want to be around people because selfishly, I want to do this for myself. Exactly. And as an extrovert in a way now, I, I don't know if I'm an extra. I still don't know. I feel like I am. But I want to go out and I want to serve people and I want to help people and I want to just hang out with other people and I want to do things with people and I want to just it's all about everyone else now it's not about my own selfish desires and, and it fills you up and it encourages and you and I think right there alone I mean just thinking about like football and how I don't care as much to watch I mean I care I still want to watch football and stuff but it's like there's other important things that are serving people that are it's bigger than just me the yep. picture is bigger than me it's not about just me it's about other people now and I think that's now made me I don't I guess I'm an extra I don't know so I think you're like way more extroverted 100 percent. yeah no, i would say so for be. sure like, like i i you don't embrace opportunities now when we get invitations from people to go do things you're like yeah like let's go i used to be the, the i used to be so scared to meet new people i used to yep. be so scared to talk to people he would always and be now like sam you have to start the conversation remember don't forget about me i'm awkward in front of new people i don't know how to talk in front of people yeah. and i'd always be like what i'm like i also think it's a confidence thing too we're a little off topic right now, but I also think it's a confidence thing, too. I think when you have a little bit more confidence to talk to people, you have a little but bit how more do you confidence, get confidence in yourself. You have to practice it and you, you have, have to do, do it. it. And you have to but if you just like it. hide behind the defense mechanism of I'm an introvert, you're never going to get uncomfortable to do it. So anyways, yeah, I think it's a little bit of confidence and a little bit of actually wanting to serve other people. Yeah. Um, I would but say I now think that also comes from having a deep, inter intimate relationship with Jesus and God. 100%. Like. Yeah challenging you in your life saying hunter i have a passion and a purpose that i've given you to fulfill here on earth and it has nothing to do with you and if you look at every day as just like what can i get from this world to like it's this difference between having a producer versus a consumer mindset yeah and i think about this all the time i want to raise children that are producers that are not consumers yeah. And what you were talking about is when it's you good. were introverted, you, it was all about consuming. It was what can the world give me? So today I want to watch NFL football and lay in my bed and watch all the things for, you know, four to five hours. Consume, that consume, 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 consume. Yeah. And our generation of kids that we're raising, a lot of them are consumers. It's like quick information, TikTok, social media, TV. Everything is like feeding you. You just watch something and it feeds you. And so you're just consuming it. But what are you producing? What yeah. are what value That's are you good. adding to this world? And I don't want our children to be consumers. I want them to be producers. I want them to walk into a room or go into an environment or be at home and say, I'm going to add value to this space. I'm going to add value to this person. I'm going to love and I'm going to serve this person. I'm not just going to expect that you're supposed to do something for me. And yeah, that if you don't do good. something for me, that you're a bad person or that you have to do something for me. Yeah. I want our kids to know everything that you receive is a gift from God and you can't earn God's love. And there's nothing that you should have to do to earn it. But at the end of the day, you need to be adding value and service and putting in the work um, to add value to this world and not just consume it. And I yeah. do think that ties back to having this difference now in you Again, we're not generalizing this for every introvert versus extrovert, but um, extroverts typically have more of this passion and this desire to want to take on opportunities and say yes to engagements and say yes to things because they they want to go and love and serve people. Yeah, no, 100%.
So we got a little bit off topic we there, did. I feel like. Um, but it all comes back to balancing work and family life in your marriage yeah. because it's all it's all in a way c- correlated. Something that yeah. you're going to take from this is going to bless you. It's going to stick. Balancing work and family, the way to do it is to not be selfish. And I think that's a way to thrive in anything. Stop being selfish. Stop consuming your fleshly desires. Stop consuming. Be a producer, like Sam just said. Um, and I think you will literally crush anything you do. And yeah. So we've talked about a lot of really powerful things here. We hope that something sticks and something that you receive from this just blesses you. Yeah. Um, I know this was a long episode, but um, thanks for sticking with us and for being here and for tuning in. Um, you know, share this with a friend that you feel like that it could encourage and it could bless. And um, we release podcast episodes every other Monday. Um, so every other week um, here on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and you can watch here on YouTube. So make sure that you subscribe to us if you haven't yet. We're like this close, literally this close to a thousand subscribers. And that's been our goal for a while. So we'd yep. love to hit that um, with this episode. So make sure you subscribe and then Hunter, tell them how they can connect with us. Yeah. So we are on Instagram. That is where you need to connect with us. Instagram and YouTube, I think is the best place to connect with us. Instagram for sure, because we want to know what you guys want us to talk about. At Life with the Lizenbees. Oh yeah. At Life with the Lizenbees. Of course. At Life with the Lizenbees on Instagram, you can connect with us. And we really want to know what you guys want us to talk about. Yeah. Like, what do you guys want to hear? Because we're not here again to serve ourselves. We're here to serve you. Yeah. So we uh, want to know. So we got to know. Like, we if we're not just here to talk about things we want to hear because we already know them. <laughs> so we want to talk about what you guys want to uh, hear. So just you know, if you want to comment in one of our posts, if you want to send a private message, um, Sam posts some polls sometimes. Answer those. Tell us what yes. you want us to talk about, and we will try our best to get to those and um, hit those topics. So yeah. Uh, if you want to send something super private and you don't want it on Instagram, we have an email at lifewiththelizenbees at gmail.com. Yep. Um, you can send an email to there as well. We don't really use emails much, but hey, we're there. If you're an email person, send an email. All right. Well, thanks so much for tuning into this episode. Uh, we hope it blessed you and we'll see you in two weeks from now um, for another episode. I'm thinking we should talk about like why Hunter's not an introvert anymore. I don't know. Maybe we'll see. All right, guys. Later. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.